Okay, so in class today you learned a little bit about pyrus sequencing, how DNA polymerase during the sequencing reaction is able to release a pyrophosphate each time a nucleotide is incorporated. That pyrophosphate then goes through a series of reactions generating ATP, which then can be used by luciferase to generate light. Then the pyrosequencer is able to detect that light in the form of a peak, and it continues on with the next dispensation. Now this is great for pyrosequencing, but we're going to be changing it around just a bit, using the same sequencing reaction, but now we're going to be looking at multiple different templates. So instead of getting an accurate sequence, we're going to be getting a pattern, a pattern that can be used like a fingerprint. So these are some of the data that we were able to generate in class. We're going to be looking here at section four, and uh, we're looking at environmental sample ES977. These were run in a triplicate, so we have a 977A, B, and C. And what we're looking at here are the pyrograms, which is just a graphic representation of the peak heights of light, the light output that's given off at each of these dispensations that's shown down below. So we have a total of 94 dispensations and then multiple peak heights coming off. What we need to do is we need to take a look at these uh, replicate runs to see if they give us a, a similar uh, pyroprint. As shown here when we're looking through these pyrograms, you can see that these guys seem to have very similar peaks, uh, suggesting that they're the same, or at least coming from the same organism. But unfortunately, uh, we need to have a numerical value uh, associated with this. Just like a fingerprint may look similar to another fingerprint, but you need to be able to, to have some critical threshold that states that those fingerprints are the same or they're not the same. And the same is true for pyroprints. So what we need is we need to have our pyroprints that are at least 99% similar. That would constitute a match. So trying to determine whether these pyrograms are 99% similar or not, it's going to be very difficult to do. So we're going to have to go to another set of data. We're going to take a look at now the actual values associated with those peak heights, and that's what's shown in this Excel file that was also given to you through PolyLearn. So what we see here again with section four, now each of you did one of these, and you should have done one of these in a group of three, so uh, your group then should have the data represented here. Now if we were to take a look at the peak heights, you can see that there's quite a bit of variability between these peak heights. Uh, it looks kind of like B and C are fairly similar in the peak height here, but A is quite a bit lower. Now does that mean that A is different, or that it's less than 99% similar to these other two? Well, imagine these peak heights as kind of representing the ink whenever you would do a fingerprint. Depending upon how much ink is on your finger or how hard you press your finger onto the paper, you may have variable amounts of ink, uh, even though they are coming from the exact same finger from the same person. So, in looking at these, even though we may have peak heights that are lower than the other peak heights, that doesn't mean that they're not 99% similar. So to be able to evaluate these, we're going to use Pearson correlation. What Pearson correlation does is it averages all of the numbers within uh, this array, and then we'll look at each dispensation to determine how far off is that dispensation from the average. And we see here that uh, examples A, B, and C show you a series of peak heights, and the Pearson correlation is right down here at the end. So for example, uh, A versus B, I'm going to click inside here, and you can see it's looking at all of those dispensations in A and comparing them with B. And the correlation shows that they are 99.973646% similar. And so we can see from these data that all three of these uh, meet that threshold that they are indeed coming from what we would call the same strain. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just copy this and paste it right down here with this new set of data uh, that you guys generated. And as long as I keep it in the same column when I copy and paste it in, we should have the same setup there. So that A versus B, uh, followed by A versus C, followed by B versus C. And what we see is even though A, the peak heights, were very different from B and C in this example, they still meet our threshold, 99.8% similar, 99.9% similar. So take a look at these compared to other isolates. So for example, compare 977 versus 978 and see if they're similar. 